Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'd like to show you how to implement drag and drop with tables. So what you see right here are three different tables on the same page and these are all based on the employees table in the underlying database. We're working with the HR schema. So what, what, what I did with my table is I added a column called emp type. Okay, so if I do a describe on my employees table, you can see here that we have emp type and it is of type char one character. So some of the employees don't have any emp type, so there are no type specified. Others are salaried, so they have a value of capital S, and others are commissioned with a capital C. And what we're trying to do here is be able to uh, take some rows in here. For example, if I want to take these three records right here, these are all employees with no specific employee type, and drag it over here and update that. Okay, and so the idea here is to be able to drag and drop and change the underlying, you know, employee type. And so this is actually persisting to the underlying database. So to get things going, I want to show you what we're starting off with and then I'll show you how to implement drag and drop. Okay, so let's take a quick look at our data model first of all. I've already created an entity object. So here it is, the employee EO is my entity object and it's simply based on the HR employees uh, table. Now keep in mind that I did add that column called emp type. Okay, and um, so there's my entity object and then I created several other, three other uh, view objects. One is just for employees that do not have an emp type. So if you look at the underlying query here, you can see that the where clause says where emp type is null or emp type equals an empty string order by last name, first name. Okay, so there we have that. It is based on the employee EO. Here I have salaried EMPs. The only thing different here is my WHERE clause, so where EMP type equals capital S. That's also based on the employee entity object. And then I have my commissioned EMPs. Okay, so here's the query behind that, where EMP type equals C. Okay, so Let's go ahead and create a page. I already have a JSF page where I've implemented this, but I just want to show you how to do this from scratch. So I say new. We're going to create a page. ADF drag and drop test. And I'm just going to do a blank page here. And then in here, what I'd like to do is go to my layout and let's go to our panel grid layout and in here I'd like to have one row and three columns. So now inside of here, inside of my grid cell, I'm going to include here a panel box layout that's to, so we can get a nice uh, little label at the top. And in here, the text is going to say emps, no emp type. So I'll go ahead and copy this, paste it into here, and the only thing I'm going to change is I'll call this salaried emps. And then in here, this will be commissioned. Amps. Now at this point, you'll see that here's my first grid cell panel box. Inside of here, I'm going to go to my data controls and we're going to add the employees V01 right in there. We're going to create a read-only table. And I just want to include just the real pertinent information like the employee ID, the um, maybe first name and last name. I'll allow for single row uh, selection and sorting. OK, 
Okay, so there's my table. Let me do the same thing here for the salaried. Read only table. And then finally, here's the commission dems. There we go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. And the way drag and drop works, there's several ways of implementing drag and drop depending on what you're trying to drag. But when it comes to uh, tables and moving things around, moving uh, rows around, what you want to do is provide a drag source and a drop target. Now each one of these tables is going to be both a drag source and a drop target. So I'm just going to implement this here on the table. Um, and uh, you know, do the, the configuration and then copy those tags onto this table as well. So right in here for this table, let me just do a quick little search for the drag source component. I'll drag it right on there. And then for the action, the action is going to be move and the default action is going to be move. Discriminant is a string and uh, basically if you have lots of different drag sources, you can differentiate them by by providing a discriminant, but actually all three of these are going to have the same discriminant. Okay, so now that I have my drag source, now I want to do a quick search on drop target. So my drop target will also be a child of table, and it's asking us for a drop listener. So a drop listener is going to be a managed bean method, and I'll just go in here and um, and let's go ahead and create the managed bean. So here we'll just call this our uh, drop bean generate class if it doesn't exist okay method let's just call this handle drag drop and then it asks about a uh, flavor class so data flavor just specifies well what is it uh, that what is the underlying data that we're moving around Okay, so for the flavor class, since we want to move around uh, row key sets, I'm going to go in here to edit, and we're going to go to org dot Apache my faces Trinidad model, and we're looking for row key set. Okay, so I want you to see what this does right in here. I have a drop target tag. And for the action, we want to specify that this is a move action. And then for the data flavor, this is the flavor class, and I use the same discriminant as I did up in here. So it's row move. Go back in there, there we go. Okay, so now that I have that, let's take a look at our drop bean. Okay, so you'll see here that in our drop bean, we have this public DND action handle drag drop. It takes as its argument a drop event. From this variable, we can get information about um, the drag and drop operation. Okay, now we also want to have programmatic access to those tables. Okay, and so that's where the binding comes into play. Okay, so let's go back to this JSF right here. Here's this first table right here and I to get programmatic access I set the binding. I'm going to reference that same drop bean and here I'll just call this emp table and I'll do the same thing for these other tables. There's my binding We'll call this salaried table. And then finally, this guy down here.
and here we'll call this commissioned table. Okay, so what did setting the binding do for us in our bean code? Well, let's take a look at this. Let me just close some of this stuff in here. Okay, so you'll see here that I have programmatic access to those three rich tables and uh, there's getters and setters for these as well. Okay, now let's take a look at our JSF page one more time. You'll see that as far as the bindings go, we just have these three view objects right here. We also want to have bindings for the commit operation as well as, um, you know, re-executing our view objects. And so um, let me just go ahead and add those here. We have our uh, application module, there's the commit, and then I'm going to have an action binding for the employees view object. So you'll see here we have execute. Now um, I'm going to make this a little more meaningful in a minute. I'm going to rename these so um, it's, it's going to be really obvious to us what we're doing. Uh, you'll see that right here I have this highlighted and I look at the property inspector and I can change what this is actually called. So this is the word by which we access it from a Java bean. So here I might say, for example, uh, execute employees. Okay, so I'll do the same thing, another action one for the salaried. Okay, we'll call this execute salaried. And then finally, we'll call this execute commissioned. Okay, so we will be able to access these bindings through our managed bean in just a moment. Okay, so uh, back to our page right here. Just a quick little overview. I want to make sure that I have everything set for my tables. Okay, so for this first table up here, you'll see that I already set up the drag source and drop target. I'll go ahead and copy these and paste them to these two other tables as well. Okay, so far so good. I think we're set on the JSF level. Let's take a closer look at our drop bean. Okay, so I'm going to just paste some code right in here. This is the handler, the handle drag and drop. I'm going to paste code in here and just step you through it so you understand what I'm doing in here. Okay, so make this a little larger. In fact, I can just maximize this. And uh, you'll see here that I am taking my drop event and I'm getting the drag component, downcasting that to a rich table. Then I get my transferable object from the drop event. So that's going to be my row key set right in here. Okay, so here we have our data flavor. When we take our data flavor, it has a static method called get data flavor. Here we pass in our row key set dot class. Here's the discriminator. And so it returns a data flavor object. And then from there, we can take our transferable object, call get data, pass in our data flavor object, and it finally returns our row key set. From there, we can get our iterator, so we can loop through in case we did multiple selection. Okay, so here I want to take my drop event and get the drop component. Okay, so here we have our local variable called new emp type. It's initialized to an empty string. And here, if our drop table is equal to our salaried table, then we're going to set the new emp type to capital S. If it's commission table, we set it to capital C. And if it's the emp table, we're going to set it to an empty string. And then finally in here, we're looping through our row key set. So our key is really a list because uh, remember, a key might be a compound key. So in our case, it's a simple key. So it's just a list of one item. And uh, then we take our table and we set the row key. So now we have a current row. From here, we get the row data. Then we call the row binding dot get row, which returns our row object. If we want to get access, programmatic access to the old M type, we can do that. I'm not really doing anything with this, so this line is not really necessary. 
But here what I'm doing is taking my row and I'm setting the emp type attribute now to this new emp type. Then what I want to do is perform a commit and I want to then get my binding container. So here is a, a private helper method that I created that gives us access to our DC binding container. Okay, so here we're calling the commit, then we're calling the execute salaried, execute commissioned, execute employees. It automatically updates the table. And then we return our DND action dot, instead of none, we say dot move. Save that. Now let's run it. Okay, so here are some employees that do not have any employee type. I'm going to select a few of these, so just hit my control key, select about four of these, and I'll drag them over here, and that looks great. Now let's verify that this was actually successful. So I'm going to just query the database. I'm going to say select employee ID from employees where M type equals C and you can see that those are the four employees. Okay, looks great. Okay, let me minimize this. I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.